She is going to help you hone the edges on your presentation process. She's going to help you craft the greatest way to say what it is that you want to say. Words not to use, words and phrases that you do want to use, and why. Take a lot of good notes. You're going to learn a lot. From the incredible Miss Patricia Fripp. When we speak in a sales process, especially if you have a long sales process, we have to speak to be remembered and repeat it. We want to speak to the audience of our audience. If you sound the same as everybody else, you have no advantage. Remove every word that you do not need and the words that are left are more memorable. Say them in an interesting, unique way and pause so that they can be digested so that the person we talk to can talk to another audience we have not met as of this moment. And when you master the ability to tell your happy, satisfied client stories well, it is as if you are taking your happy, satisfied clients with you on your sales call. And specificity. Specificity builds credibility. And everything else being equal, the best presentation wins. I have a good friend from the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. And one morning he called and said, Patricia, help. As you know, I'm a great salesperson one-on-one. -on -one. However, I have the opportunity to speak to a convention committee, and I get really nervous when I stand up and have to talk to a group. So I asked him the questions we should all ask ourselves before any presentation. Who are you addressing? Convention committee. Two, what are you really selling? He said, well, I'm really not selling the Fairmont because they would stay here if they come to San Francisco. But I, I happen to know that they're equally considering San Diego. And the idea is you can't ever knock your competition. What you do is make your offering sound more appealing. How long do you have to speak? Eight minutes. What is it worth to the Fairmont Hotel if you get the business? He said $500,000. I said, let me get this right. You have eight minutes to make $500,000. Why don't you say this? Welcome to the Fairmont. Thank you for the opportunity to show you the benefits of San Francisco. And in the next eight minutes, you will decide the best decision you can make for your association and your members is to bring your convention to San Francisco and the Fairmont Hotel. So including the welcome, that is six you or yours to Fairmont. That is a you focused, focusing on their point of view, just by reading what you would say to build rapport. San Diego is a magnificent destination. And you should go there another year. <laughs> However, the reasons you should come to San Francisco this year are, now give logical, specific reasons. The key to connection is conversation. The secret of conversation is to ask questions. And the quality of the information you receive depends on the quality of your questions. Patricia, that was golden. I've got a pages full of notes back there. It is very difficult to be creative in isolation. And why it's important with a team is because without consistency, there is no quality. You don't thank people for the time. What do you say? Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you to the opportunity to discuss how now, you're going to fill in the blanks what is your solution can help them become or solve their problem. Many of my clients believe that once they got their presentation together and the PowerPoint, they're done. No, I will tell them, you're halfway done. 
Now you've got to get it in your body. At the end of lunch on day two, the national sales manager got up and said, the sales team were talking at lunch and we decided we have absolutely no idea how we've sold anything before we heard Patricia. The stories that you tell in your sales conversations and presentations need to be true. They do not need to be 100% accurate. By putting it in their dialogue, you can say about you and your company what you would feel as if you were being too salesy or showing off too much. If John Smith, the senior vice president of the ABC company was here, he would tell you. We would not have believed it possible that this project came in under budget and three weeks ahead of schedule. I challenge you to revisit what you say and to take presentations and sales conversations to the level of preciseness that you need. We need to build these habits in everyday life. You will not improve what you're not aware of. Model that you are the best in your industry just by the way you communicate. May I add some commentary, Nancy? She was transitioning into speaking, and I'd just been in it for a few years. And I've heard her speak probably a hundred times through all these years. She's never been better than today. I just want to say about your growth, even since I heard you speak a year ago, is extraordinary. What you talked about today is so important to us in sales, and I thought it was masterful. Thank you. We definitely want that on video. Hi, good morning. Thank you for time. I'm Joe Blow and I work with the ABC company. And we've been in business for 36 years and we have this unique methodology and this is who we serve and we'd love to do business with you. Nobody cares. Because everyone is more interested in themselves and the secret of being powerfully persuasive is that your subject has to be of interest to them. And in a sales conversation and presentation, if it's not focused on them, they're not going to be quite as interested. Well, you're sitting down or standing up, whether it's one person, five, or the entire leadership team, that you say congratulations. Then you look at what are they proud of? Now, good say you have a challenge. Your board of directors has challenged you to increase sales 5% and not increase your budget more than 2 Or you have an amazing opportunity. You are so well-known locally. Let's see how we can help you be well-known nationally. You have an awesome responsibility as you are considered one of the best employers in Memphis. How do you continue that reputation when you have no more budget? These openings all depend based on what they've told you. And you can try what works best for you in your situation. You have an important decision to make. Do you stay with the last vendor or look for a new, fresh approach? Do you have the confidence of knowing that their conversation or presentation will be as good as a 20-year veteran. Without consistency, there is no true quality. That is very true with your conversations and sales presentations. If you have a, a champion who's been helping prepare you for the presentation to the senior leaders, make them look like heroes. John has been very generous with his time and information. He mentioned your challenges are. So again, this is how we're structuring your presentation based on what you heard. So we have it. Congratulations. Thank you for the opportunity. This is what you're most interested in hearing about. This presentation, or you say this conversation. Now again, this might sound a little formal for your world. You make it 
what works for you. But you let them know our conversation is structuring around your interest priorities and major focus. Their words as close as possible. If this is a more formal presentation where you are brought into a boardroom and you're talking to a committee, this is when you introduce yourself. One, they probably know who you are. Two, you're probably on the agenda. Three, if you have a PowerPoint, your name is probably on your slide. But if you want to be, if you want to build interest, of course, you're gonna talk about them and their interests first, and then it's a matter of probably reintroducing yourself. And I like to say, if we have not had the pleasure of meeting, I'm Patricia Fripp. In my role as your account executive, financial advisor, automobile expert, whatever you would be, and serving clients of your size and complexity. Everybody thinks they are more, their problems are more complex, their business is more complicated. You can expect. For them, it takes a year to have a one hour conversation, which if they win the business, in five years is worth $20 million. And I said, well, when you're about to give a presentation after a year's worth of work, how long do you rehearse? And I expected them to say, well, the week before, we get in the boardroom and we go over the presentation and we bring a team in to listen, get them to, to, to give us all the tough questions that they, we might hear. Then we bring another group. Then we with video, we review. That's what I expected, a week's rehearsal for $20 million after one year's of work. You know what they said? If we're lucky, we'll run through in the back of Mary's car before we walk in. Ladies and gentlemen, life is a series of sales situations. Every day you sell yourself, your ideas, your products, your service, your point of view, your value. And everything else being equal, your presentation will make the difference. Frip. It seems as if some of our good prospects took seminars from people like you telling them how to resist our sales presentation. Some people might resist a sales presentation, but nobody can resist a good story well told. You see, we use words to communicate However, often our prospects and friends and customers remember because they see what we say. And with a well-told story, that is definitely true. This is what we mean. My friend at the Fairmont did call and say, help. What I want you to do is imagine these perhaps two, three months of conversations you had with a potential customer happened in one conversation. Imagine they said, help, and could clearly articulate their problem, which in fact they might have needed you to help them articulate what was really going on. Step one, is the situation. And the situation needs to be delivered in your prospect's words. For example, Pat Will called and said, Patricia, as you know, we are a $2 billion software company with aspirations of being 20 billion. We're having a sales meeting at the Bellagio and we're bringing 1,500 of our salespeople from all over the world. 40% of them were acquired when we bought our major competitor. So we want everyone to know they are with the right company at the right time. Our strategy is sound, especially the 40% who did not choose to work with us. Now, the work you've done with our managers and engineers and technical demos is superb. 
but here is the toughest challenge of your entire career. This is not a company that has any corporate rock stars. Our president lives in Paris and he's gonna be here next week and we need you to write him a speech, make him a rock star, and you got four hours. Now he's not a bad speaker, little shy, brilliant, an engineer, but we need him to be a rock star. So four hours to create an engineer into a rock star, just a day in the life in the office. Now what I want you to consider is one, that conversation is true 100%. It is not 100% accurate because I've worked with them before, so I knew they were a $2 billion company with aspirations being 20 billion. I did know they were having their meeting at the Bellagio with 1,500 people. I did know they'd bought their competitors. So I am shrinking two assignments into one in one conversation. So if you're taking notes, one, you have to introduce the backstory of the character who is going to be in this story, which is their president. He's shy, he's brilliant, he's an engineer. Not a bad speaker, but he's not a rock star. So you need the backstory of the company, the backstory of the person, and you're shrinking all the conversations we had at this point into one. That is the situation. And when you can deliver that in the customer or prospect's words, because there's a difference between delivering the dialogue and reporting the dialogue. Delivering the dialogue is, Patricia, as you know, and this is a great technique if you put your name in as if they were talking to you, you know and the audience knows the other person is talking. Reporting on the dialogue, which is not nearly as effective because you can't add the emotion to it, is, uh, one of my clients called and, and asked me if I could work with their executive, who wasn't a bad speaker, but he wasn't good. And the work that we'd done before was fine and well received. But this was a very important meeting. No, that's reporting on the dialogue. The solution can be in your words. So as soon as I met Bernard, I said, how do you do? If you had one sentence rather than 45 minutes, what would you say? He said, this is a brand new company. I said, good, write this down. Welcome to a brand new company. I would explain the process I went through. What you would then say in your situation would explain, so what we did for the ABC company is go through our three-step process. So you would then explain the solution that you helped the company or the person in the beginning of the story because what you are now doing is answering your prospects unasked questions. If I say yes, what is going to happen? What is this going to look like? And then the success is in your prospects or your happy customer's words now. Your happy customer words in the success. If Pat Wynn were here, she would tell you, we would not have believed it possible that our brilliant president would walk on stage, be funny, poignant, dramatic, inspire action and commitment, and only had four slides. They made promises and kept promises. They, we have never had a, a vendor partner who took their assignment and our challenge as seriously. And this is what I recommend you do. 
when you've completed your day, you've tidied your desk, you've got your to-do list for tomorrow, then you make three calls. You make three calls because you want to be the most interesting voicemail that the people you're calling have the next morning. And you want to leave a message that says, hey, Don, I never get t tired of telling the story about how your wife was so excited with her new car. Or, I never get tired of telling the story about how your family loves their new house. Or, I never get tired of telling the story about how your conference was the greatest success in your 70-year company history because. Would you mind setting up a five-minute conversation where you can remind me what your challenges were before we fill in the blank what you did? What have been the results in your words? And is it okay if I tell this as an example of the services or products that we deliver? Any time that's convenient for you, let me know. I'm in the office all next week, every morning. I absolutely 100% can promise you that the best story with characters and backstories and dialogue and the dramatic lesson learned from that story will be what they talk about weeks and months later when they're deliberating about what is the best company to do business with. The question I ask my clients more than any other is, if it weren't a thing, what would it be? For one of my biggest clients, I coach 100 brilliant engineers twice a year to deliver technical presentations at their customer conferences. Now, what is added to the complexity is at last year's meeting, we had customers from 71 countries. In Silicon Valley, this is an international audience only driving 50 miles from my house. Unless you are specific, if English is your second or third language, you do not understand what is meant in the isolation of the sentence. So one of these brilliant engineers said, there are two things people love about. So I asked, if they weren't things, what would they be? Innovative upgrades. I said, there are billions of people in the world. What people love your innovative upgrades? He said, systems administrators. Now, can you understand, if English is your second or third language, or even if it's your first, the difference in the quality of the communications between two things people love and two innovative upgrades that systems administrators love? I was coaching a banker, very prestigious background, and I said, knowing the answer, how well educated are you? He had more degrees than a thermometer. I said, why are you such a sloppy speaker? And then he said, the people who report to me, we were all in training together. So I said, you're trying to be one of the guys, but you're not one of the guys. You need to speak in a way that shows all the others if you want to elevate your career and be in this position, this is how you speak. You don't go down to their level, you raise them up. I was coaching a technology team, salespeople and the technical staff, about being precise. And they, they said, but Patricia, our customers speak this way. And again, a brand new fripicism fell flawlessly from my lips. 
I said, there are better ways to emotionally connect with your prospects than modeling their bad behavior and sloppy language. If life is a series of sales situations, the real sale comes after the sale. Now, this is why service departments in any business, all customer service and follow-up are important. My brother, Robert Fripp, is a incredible guitarist. According to Rolling Stone magazine, he is the 42nd best guitarist in the history of the world, living or dead. He played on David Bowie's Heroes, and he has a group called King Crimson. This is their 50th anniversary. Oh. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Well, watch King Crimson 2019. They will be coming close by. Nashville? Good. We already have fans. They'll be in Nashville and I believe Atlanta. And one day I called my brother, as I do every day, as I will, when Don and I are driving home. I said, brother, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm practicing my guitar while I'm watching a Steven Seagal movie. And I said, well, you probably can't be play paying attention to both. And he said, what I am doing is building a muscle memory into my hands. Because those of you who are familiar with brothers playing, he plays very, very fast. You, can't, you, you can hard, and, and he does it effortlessly because of his personal discipline. And what I would challenge you is take these ideas that work for your presentations and rehearse to build a muscle memory. I built my career, as Don did in the early days, as a keynote speaker. And what I have found, which has developed my business, was listening to my clients, same as it will be for you. And one day at a national sales meeting, the sales manager came up and said, Patricia, I, I liked your speech, but I loved how you delivered it. Can you teach our salespeople to speak that way? Because it takes us one year to have a one-hour conversation with a hospital board. It's worth $9 million a year if we get the business. And we are losing sales. It has absolutely nothing to do with our offering. It has our price. We keep hearing back that the sales presentation skills of our competitors are better than ours. And little did I know with that request, she had just given me the answer to always be in demand, no matter what the economy is doing. And I would challenge you, if this made sense, make it part of your life. And I will close by saying, habits are like railway tracks. They take a long time to get into place. But once they're there, they will take you anywhere you want to go. That is very true with your sales conversations and presentations. I hope you will remember me, but much more important than remembering me, FRIP, remember what FRIP stands for. Frequently reinforce ideas that are productive and profitable. Thank you. Well. Patricia Fripp. Terrific, Patricia.